Hello, this is the Water Rocket Simulator 10,000. The Water Rocket Simulator 10,000 is meant to be a useful simulator that takes stats of a water rocket, such as mass, size, water volume, etc., and gives the user approximation of heights, velocities, and thrust force. The software is aimed towards younger audiences who want approximations of rocket stats before an actual launch, and thus the outputs are relatively simple to understand and use. Taking a look at the script the program will follow, we can see the first section will ask for various inputs for pressure, diameters, water volume, etc. These inputs are all meant to be fairly easy to measure in real life. The next section in the code displays various errors if an input is not within range. This model is only meant to be accurate for the ranges specified, and those values outside of the ranges will receive errors. Moving on, moving on to the first call to a function, the volume function. The volume function is meant to calculate the change in pressure and volume due to the water being ejected out of a rocket, as well as an estimated completion time for the thrust length. Up here we have a few constants and variables defined. Down below, the while loop will calculate pressure and volume for each step in, the, in time which is defined here, and place them in a vector of decreasing order. Since each time the loop is calculated, there is an increase in the time step. We can find the total time by multiplying the length of one of the vectors with the time step. The calculations here are found through a form of Bernoulli's equation based on theory by Professor Peter Nielsen. Back in the script, the NETS function called for is a thrust. This function will use the pressure and nozzle diameter of the rocket to calculate the changing force of the ejecting water. Since this thrust force is based on the pressure input, it will also be a vector of the same length as a pressure vector, with the same time step in between values. Back in the script, the last function called for is the mass function. This simple function will calculate the change in mass as water is being ejected out of the rocket. This mass vector would also be the same length as the pressure and the thrust vectors. By then taking the average of the mass and the thrust vector, we now have a force that acts over a time we can then use impulse momentum to find the final velocity at the end of the thrust phase. After the thrust phase is completed, we now have a rocket that is coasting through the air with just an initial velocity. This then becomes a simple projectile physics problem. We can then make an anonymous function of the height of the rocket with respect to time. We then plot it over the amount of time that before it hits the ground. Down here, we make various labels for stats that are easily visible on the plot for the user. At the end of the code, we then display a list of stats that the user may find useful in their plans for building water bottle rockets. Here's what it would look like if a user were to run our code. So let's say we pump up a rocket to about 80 psi. The diameter of our nozzle is usually about like an inch. Our rocket diameter, let's say, is about four inches. The height of our rocket, let's say, it's about 14 inches. We fill it up with a liter of water, and our rocket weighs about 0.4 pounds. We run the code. And right here, we can see we get a list of stats. And then our plot, we can see we get a mass height at 3.61 seconds of 209 feet. We can see right here plotted in red is our thrust phase with the blue being our coasting phase. At the end of our thrust, we're leaving with about 112 feet per second velocity. Down here in our stats, we can see we get a drag coefficient of our rocket of about 0.39. Our thrust time is also pretty short at 0.1 seconds. 
Our average thrust is about 51 pounds. Our velocities, we have heights and then max heights and total air time down here as well. One way a user could use this program is to compare what would happen if they change a certain variable right here. So right now we're at a height of about 209 feet. Let's see what happens if we change the weight of the rocket and bump it up. So we're going to have the same pressure, the same diameter nozzle, same of the other stats. Put them all in. But for the weight of the rocket, let's see what happens if we bump it up to about a pound. We could actually see, since it's heavier now, we actually didn't reach a higher height now. Our thrust values also change, our velocities. Users could go back and forth and compare what changed, what didn't change, if it was beneficial to them, or if they should have stayed with the lower weight.